Hello and welcome back to the channel. The whole world seems to have gone rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis mad. We've had over half a million views on this series now and even had a few articles in Men's Health too. Not too bad. Something else that's been trending is also Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know what that means. Two fight scenes to diagnose from the first episode in this series. Rather neatly, one by the Falcon and one featuring the Winter Soldier. So three, two, one, fight. Flying kick, blunt force trauma to the chest, possible left anterior rib fracture. Roundhouse kick to the left temple, possible facial bone fracture, traumatic brain injury and intracranial hemorrhage. Left hook to the jaw, possible fracture dislocation of the mandible. Followed by another roundhouse to the head, this time looking more like nasal fractures and as before, traumatic brain injury and intracranial bleed. Thrown on his back, so we'd need to immobilize his spine at the scene here, so we can do some imaging to rule out vertebral fracture and possible spinal cord injury. A kick causing blood force trauma, probably just bruising, but I would be concerned about the fall from 30,000 feet. Pilot here sustains a high velocity penetrating trauma from the bullets. Not quite sure where these go. One goes through the windshield, I'm not sure that's already gone through him. But he certainly has two bullets with entry wounds around the posterior neck and posterior upper thorax. The fact he loses consciousness straight away would indicate that brain tissue has been injured and that damaged brain tissue may also bleed, what we call an intracerebral hemorrhage. Other things that may keep him unconscious if this bullet has ruptured any major blood vessels or the heart itself, so the blood isn't getting to the brain. But to figure out any more specific injuries, you'd have to locate the exit wound, if any, and follow the bullet tract, bearing in mind the bullet can ricochet off bones and other tissues. and. Even if you locate the track, you can also get injuries further afield if the bullet fragments and splits into shrapnel and damages other tissues that way. This would come into hospital as a major trauma, so we'd want to do a full A to E assessment with early interventions including oxygen, a chest drain if that bullet has punctured the lung, and critically IV access so we can do fluid and blood resuscitation given any blood loss. And once stable, a trauma CT with contrast to investigate the damage and prep for surgery. Possible nasal bone fracture from the elbow and then maybe a depressed skull fracture and brain contusion from that jetpack assisted ramrod. The antagonist gives as good as he gets here with a kick to the zygomatic arch. I'm surprised this doesn't fracture here, but in the next shots in this series, Falcon looks fine. In fact, all the bad guys have probably only had superficial injuries despite my diagnosis on them because they're able to jump up, get in these wingsuits and then jump out the plane. Well, I say they've all had superficial injuries. I think the pilot is still out of it. We then see this mind-blowing mid-air chase scenes with a fair few explosions from remote mines, some missiles, the number of explosions we see Falcon come close to, I would expect some kind of secondary blast injury. So these are injuries from fragments from the explosion. So possibly some foreign bodies would have ended up in the skin and soft tissue. So they'll need to be removed and the wounds cleaned and closed. And then we see the hostage is rescued, or should I say almost killed. Vulcan must be traveling at what, 100 miles per hour and hitting someone at that speed would cause multiple fractures and risk damage to vital organs. Then the force of the body accelerating from stationary up to that speed would cause further damage too, such as like neck whiplash causing a cervical spine injury. So 
So that's the Falcon back in action. Now let's check out the Winter Soldier. Three, two, one, fight. Grabbed around the neck and pulled through a wall. You'd worry about damage to the upper airway, so the cartilages in the larynx or fracture of the hyoid bone commonly seen fractured in strangulation. Even though this trauma only lasts for a few seconds, it can be life-threatening as any fracture above the clavicle can occlude the airway, so either through loss of structure or from bleeding. Blood force trauma to the cardiac box, so concerns would be sternum or rib fractures, and if so, damage to underlying organs such as lung or heart contusions. Low velocity penetrating knife trauma to the left anterior chest, likely a bleed and a puncture of the lung, what we call a hemopneumothorax. Very high mortality with these injuries, so you'd be looking to put a chest drain in to keep that lung inflated. Urgent IV access to maintain circulation and secure that knife in place for surgical removal. Another low velocity penetrating trauma from a knife, this time to the left lateral neck. I think the Winter Soldier knows what he's doing here as this is right at the front of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the one you can feel when you turn your head. What you'll also feel is your carotid artery, the main blood supply to the brain. So again this type of injury would come with it a very high mortality and judging how accurate this is, I wouldn't be surprised if it's completely transected the artery, which would mean you'd lose consciousness within seconds, never to wake up again. Even assuming if this guy is lucky and the artery is missed, we have other important structures in that area like the jugular vein and the trachea. Any injuries to these can also be life-threatening. These two fellas picked on the wrong dude. They each get multiple gunshot wounds to the head, neck and thorax. It's really only luck that's gonna keep them on the planet. We've already mentioned a lot of the possible injuries they could get. Intracranial bleeds, carotid or jugular vessel injuries, rupture to the trachea and upper airways, and hemoneumothorax too. Bear in mind though, any kind of body armor will limit the damage of those injuries to the torso. I'm guessing a possible cervical spine injury here, so a possible fracture from that blunt force trauma, could easily be paralyzed at the scene with this type of injury if the spinal cord is also damaged. And even worse, if the spinal cord is damaged above C5, so around about halfway down the neck, this is where some of the nerves come out that supply your diaphragm, your main muscle of breathing. So if they get severed, this would mean that you'd suffocate at the scene. Okay, so gunshot wound to the cardiac box. The fact it's only a single bullet gives him a chance, but understandably a very high mortality, up to around 70% if a single chamber is affected and close to 100% if multiple chambers are ruptured. Then there are other life-threatening complications to consider, such as bleeding around the heart that then compresses the heart and stops it filling, what we call a cardiac tamponade, and damage to the blood vessels in the area like the superior and inferior vena cava and the aorta. Another low velocity penetrating knife trauma, this time to the right anterior chest. You know the drill by now, likely hemoneumothorax and mortality close to 50%. Manual strangulation, he'd pass out because of compression to the carotid arteries, denying the blood supply to the brain. Doesn't really do it long enough to kill them for sure, but even so, as we said earlier, when he wakes up in a few moments, he may be unable to breathe from an internal occlusion of that upper airway if the laryngeal cartilage and hyoid bone have been fractured. And that's no doubt what that snapping sound is we heard. <laughs> And this last dude here, gunshot wound to the head, so skull fracture, intracranial hemorrhage, mortality somewhere between 40 and 90%. But this is extremely close range, 
so probably something closer to 90%. So likely dead at the scene, but even if makes it into hospital before bleeding out, there are other complications such as raised intracranial pressure, so the blood inside the skull compressing the brain tissue, which can also be fatal. So let's do a kill count for the winter soldier scene. None stable, two in serious condition, seven in critical condition, Two dead at the scene. If you enjoyed this, there is a 93% chance you'll enjoy my rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis of the Captain America elevator scene from The Winter Soldier, and a 75% chance you'll enjoy my breakdowns of the Marvel movies in general, so check them out on the channel. And if you've enjoyed it, why not like this video and subscribe to the channel too. And as always, thank you so much for all the support. Stay out of any fight scenes yourselves, and I'll be back soon. Yeah.